In your lab today, you're going to be doing sections A, B, and C from your lab manual. I want to talk about A here just to give you an idea. Once you kind of get the idea of the experiment, um, you just keep applying to, to the different situations. And part A, to figure out the heat capacity of a metal, uh, you're going to use uh, your large test tube. You're going to have uh, a stopper uh, with one hole in it, and it should fit in there. That's sort of the idea. And uh, the hole is going to be important so it doesn't um, back up a lot of heat, and you don't want to heat a cl uh, closed container. We're going to end up heating this. Um, we're going to end up putting a, a metal piece. Uh, it should be one of these three things out there for you to look at and to use. Uh, TA should have those metals. Um, when you get in a lab, you should get your Bunsen burner going, start boiling some water. So we're going to use that hot water uh, to actually heat up the metal that's inside of here. We want to heat it up without getting wet. We want to dry, and we want to know what the temperature is. So we can do the experiment um, as defined in the lab manual, and as you practice with your advanced study assignment, you'll know how to do the calculations. You're going to heat up a hot piece of metal. You're going to transfer it into some water, dump it into some water uh, that's in a styrofoam cup that has a lid. Okay? Uh, the TA will have all these things. Digital thermometer, if you want to use that, styrofoam cup with a lid and um, you might have some extra one hole stoppers but you might have those in your locker too. Look both places. Uh, when you're boiling in water, Bunsen burner, ring stand, ring, wire mesh and gauze to hold it on there. Uh, follow your, your lab manual. I like to put deionized water in here so you don't get any of the hard water salts like calcium carbonate and these things. They're not bad, they don't hurt the experiment, they don't do anything wrong. It just can kind of get on the edges of your beaker and um, may make it a little harder to clean up at the end. Uh, so deionized water, you can use tap water, it's okay. Um, but um, let's go move on. Uh, you're going to use a digital thermometer today. It's actually a good thing to use. It, it's going to come in a blue sleeve. You need to remove that. It's plastic. It has a high heat capacity. It doesn't like to change its temperature. Uh, so remove that. Okay. Um, and this is the way you're going to use your thermometer. And uh, this is the area because it's metal. Uh, heat will transfer through that into a little wire that, uh, inside of this. And it's connected to a little computer that figures out the temperature. Uh, this thing's battery operated, so turn it on, use it. Make sure it's in Celsius mode because that's what we want to do our calculations with uh, in Celsius. And then when you're done, please turn it off. We're going to use all the digits. Don't just grab whatever ones you feel like using. Use them all. So... Um, as in regards to our lab, metal has a he low heat capacity, so it readily transfers through there. That's why we remove the blue plastic thing. You can imagine students not doing that. So that's what we're doing. So this is ready to go. How do we use it? What we're going to do is uh, get your large test tube, and you're going to carefully slide the piece of metal into there. If you do it too hard, you can blast it through the end and break it. Put your stopper in. That has the one hole, and you're going to go ahead and insert your uh, thermometer in here. Once you have this set up, you can go ahead and put this into the boiling water and heat this thing up close to um, the uh, boiling water temperature. Okay, that should keep it dry, and um, you can then know exactly what the final temperature is of the metal. Actually, it's going to turn out to be the initial temperature of your metal in the experiment. Okay, this is a way to get to a known temperature without getting it wet. All right. Then you're going to quickly remove uh, the stopper and, okay, whoop, that was supposed to be moved. And then you're going to quickly transfer that piece of metal into a styrofoam cup that has water in it, okay? You don't want to splash the water out and you don't want any water from this to drip off into there because that has a high heat capacity. And uh, so keep that dry or keep it away. And the other thing is, you're, you want to use a thermometer to measure the temperature here. We're, you're only going to get one thermometer. Uh, you need to cool that thermometer off. And you can do it quickly by running it under some tap water. Because if it's a piece of metal and you're putting a hot piece of metal in here to measure the temperature, guess what? It'll actually itself raise the temperature and ruin your experiment. Don't do it. Okay? Cool your thermometer back down before you use it in here. And then you've got to swirl, 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 swirl lots and lots and lots of times to evenly distribute the temperature. Don't assume that it does it automatically, okay? You have to mix. Mix, 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 mix. Lots and lots and lots and lots of mixing. Mix, 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 mix. You should keep that thing moving, 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 moving. Okay? If I'm walking around and I see you guys not moving at during this experiment, I may, uh, well, I'll let you know. Keep them swirling, okay? Don't assume it mixes on its own. 
So this is essentially what you're going to do in the experiment uh, for today. Now, part A is putting a piece of metal in there. Um, part B, you're going to put, um, you're going to mix some um, solid in there like calcium chloride or ammonium chloride, and you're going to mix it around, and it'll change the temperature. And um, in part C, you'll mix um, two liquids together and, and measure the temperature change. So it's really kind of the same experiment. This was the harder one. That's why I wanted to show it to you. Um, so you got to make sure you calculate initial or find your initial temperatures and the final temperatures and the masses of the of the material. Your lab walks you through all of this. Read your lab manual, okay? We don't need to know the mass of the styrofoam cup. We want the mass of the water that's in here. And then we could compare the heat that's lost from here, the Q that's here, to the Q that's transferred in here. And they're going to be, this is the Q of the metal, and this is the Q of the water, and they're going to be equal and opposite in values. Okay, now help us do our calculation. Hope that helps you.